Join us, friends. Great Scott, Spa Guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost, Spa Guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right. It is the Spa Guy, and it is... Globe Trotting with Trey. And we are not wishing a cotton was a monkey, but you know what? There's a lot of people that are. And what that is referring to is this fake world that we live in where people pretend that they like things that they really don't like and they pretend they don't like things that they really do like or they pretend something is true that's a lie or something that's a lie that's truth. And it's actually in the Bible. It talks about that there will come a day when that is going on. And I remember 20 years ago going, I just don't ever see how that could happen. But you know what? We're there today, sadly. And yeah, I've, um, seen, I've seen a lot of lies. Lot I've of seen lies. a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah and uh, so we're going to do something a little bit different this time, friends. We're going to do a, uh, a segment of Would You Rather? And what that means is I'm going to uh, pose questions and we'll just discuss whether you would rather do this or rather do that. Right. And it could be something funny or it could be something uh, interesting as far as uh, just comparison. So it kind of will be, uh, just think about it from a standpoint of what you would rather do. Would you rather eat a sand sandwich or would you rather eat, uh, drink spoiled milk? Oh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so let's get the, uh, let's get the ball rolling here and uh, I'll start with the first one. I found some questions and, uh, one of them would be, would you rather have an unlimited gift card to McDonald's or Walmart? All right. So I'm, I start, I start it. Yeah, go ahead. I would say Walmart. Okay. Tell us why. Well, I, you know, I remember watching that documentary where that guy did that. He went and ate at McDonald's for a whole year straight. Yeah. He showed how fat he got. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to allow Actually, that it was the other way. It was the guy that the documentary, he got thin by eating McDonald's every day. No, uh, he got fat. He yeah, they see, there's another one where it's the other way. The guy claimed that he went on a diet and all he ate was McDonald's and actually lost weight. Well, you know, do you know the documentary I'm referring to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was like a big yeah. deal back like in maybe 2000. Yeah. But I'm saying there's a documentary out or there's some guy that did it the other way. Well, where he, that's all he ate at McDonald's. Okay. Nah, and, yeah. uh, and actually lost weight. So I Plus, like McDonald's. I can't, I can't eat. I can't eat fast food. Um, you know, I, I limit all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm, I don't eat fast food every day of my life or stuff like that. Uh, yeah. So I couldn't, Matt, I'd, I'd be sick of McDonald's after three days. Yeah. But I like McDonald's. But Walmart, and, um, you know, you, you, an unlimited gift card to Walmart. That's awesome. I mean, you can buy everything that you need to live on and, have groceries and uh, you can go to the electronics store and get all your kind of That's electronics that you need. Yeah. They have computers now. Uh, got SD cards, really cheap. SD, SD cards. They have cameras. Yeah. Uh, the lighting stuff that you need. Uh, pretty much anything at Walmart. Yeah. But do you eat at McDonald's? Do I eat at McDonald's? No. Yeah. I like McDonald's and I, I very rarely ever eat there. Um, and you know, I actually worked at McDonald's for a short time when I was a teenager and, okay. um, yeah, that was when I remember chicken McNuggets had just come out. They'd only been out maybe a few years. And, uh, I remember going in there and, um, the, I could smell those chicken nuggets cooking in there. Of course, they're not, they're not real. They're kind of a, uh, a mixture of things. It's, it's kind of like uh, a bologna chicken where they just take a bunch of stuff and mix it together and create these things. but. Um, I love every now and again, man. I just got to have a Big Mac. I can't help it. But yeah, well, I like the quarter pounder with cheese. That's yeah, what quarter I'll pounder get. with cheese is good too. I get that number three on the menu. And, and those uh, onions on there, you know, those are freeze dried. When I was working there, I remember. Of course, we're talking about a long time ago. That was over forty years ago. Um, the onions came in a packet. You poured them out, put water in them, and stirred them up, and then they they came to life. So they were actually freeze dried. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you learned a lot by working. Oh yeah, there. so yeah, did those they little really, tiny onions. So did they really have a system? 
Yeah, they have a system in there. I remember, speaking of a system, something that I remember jargon-wise in there is they had a thing that they called, and they would switch it up based off of the demand for that moment because there's different size patties. And, uh, you know, there's a, a bigger patty and a smaller patty. For instance, the the quarter pounder has a larger patty where the Big Mac has two smaller patties, you know, that are stacked between the bread. And they would do this thing where they would call it, they would do like, okay, now it's time to do a 12-10 turn lay. So what that means is you put 12 of one size patty and you put 10 of the other size and you keep doing that as they cook until they call out a, a 6-4 turn lay or a 12-14 turn lay or a 12-16 turn lay. So the, I would assume the first one would be the smaller patty and the second would be would be the bigger. I don't remember. And it may be the other way. But I remember them having a very specific jargon about what was actually actively cooking at any moment so they could keep up with the demand of, of the burger, you know, what was coming into the restaurant. Now they've gone so wide with it um, where they offer a lot of other things. They offer chicken. And remember, they were doing those those grilled chicken wraps at one time, and I would get those, and those were actually pretty good. They would have ranch on them. Did you ever get that? I think I did. Ever. I think I have. And they were pretty good, and then they discontinued them. Yeah. Um, and you remember Elvis loved McDonald's, you know, uh, speaking of Elvis. And uh, you've got a story about something that was very unusual for Elvis – in and Hawaii. this is an Elvis podcast, friends, but we were just, since we're talking about McDonald's, let's just talk about that for a moment, um, that uh, you were told by Dean that Elvis normally didn't even eat this, but he was craving this particular thing. Yeah, I was actually told by Dr. Nick. Oh, is it Nick? Okay. Yeah. So Dr. Nick told me that they were in uh, Hawaii, and you've seen those photos of Elvis playing football out there for the fans. And uh, so he craved one night that he wanted out of the ordinary a fish fillet sandwich from McDonald's and Elvis hated fish. Uh, Dr. Nick and Dean are also had a really funny story that happened in Mobile where they smelled, they had went to a seafood restaurant uh, before one of his concerts and they came back. It was across the street from the hotel that you and I actually located. In we Phoenix, went to there. Right? Yeah. Uh, another location video plug right there. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, they came back to Elvis's hotel room before they left to go to the arena there in Mobile, Alabama. And Elvis smelled this, this fish. And he found out it was Dr. Nick and Dean. And he made Dr. Nick and Dean go and take a shower before they got in the car <laughs> with him. Because mm -hmm. he, could, he couldn't stand that smell of fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, it was out of the, they couldn't believe that Elvis wanted a fish fillet sandwich from McDonald's. So they had to go find a McDonald's in Hawaii. They're in Hawaii of all places. And they have to go to McDonald's to get a fish fillet sandwich for Elvis. And they did. And uh, did they call that a McFish sandwich? Is that, is that it? Or a McFish fillet? Or is it just called a fish fillet? Fish fillet, I believe. That's what I know it as. So I'm, and I'm not... I think, I'm not a big eater of that. I don't know that I've ever had, but I maybe have tasted it. But it reminds me of uh, when we were kids, we would get fish sticks. Remember, yeah. they would come frozen and you would and you would um, uh, put them in the oven and thaw them out and bake them, I guess. But it was basically a, a stick of fish yeah. that uh, had a, a, a coating on it. And uh, and we would dip them in ketchup, and I remember okay. those. I remember those tasting pretty good. Well, it was very similar to that. Yeah, you know, not the way I remember it being. I never did really eat those, but I remember that afternoon after uh, my girlfriend and I stopped at Doctor Nick's, and she t he told us that story. We found a McDonald's, and I, I in honor of Elvis Presley, I got me a fish fillet sandwich. Had to have one. It was pretty good. I remember. Was it good? It was good. It was good, see, just, it's just funny that Elvis was craving that in Hawaii and he sent them out to find him a fish fillet sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> and isn't it funny that uh, the power of suggestion, when somebody mentions that now that y'all just listened to this podcast and heard us talk about McDonald's, a bunch of y'all are going to go eat at McDonald's today right. because we mentioned it. <laughs> and do and get that fish fillet in honor of Elvis. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right. So let's do another would you rather. All right. All right, so would you rather? Okay, you don't even have to really do this. You work. You're like me. Well, I I, I shouldn't say this. I'll read it and then we'll talk about it. 
Would you rather have to commute to work or have a three-day weekend? So would you rather not have to commute and have a three-day weekend or have to commute? That's not even a good question. Why would that? That that question doesn't make any sense. Well, so would you rather have to drive to work? Or have a long weekend? Have, That's easy. You would have a long weekend. That's not even a good question. You know, and the, thing, the times have changed today. Yeah. You know, like I'm a, you know, I'm a videographer. I'm a filmmaker. I'm the, I'm a video. People don't know this, Billy. You might not even know this, but I am the videographer of my entire city. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, we have a, a, um, uh, like a main street thing. I'm the videographer of that. Um, we have a college in town. I'm doing video work for the college and plus all my other businesses and being a videographer, you know, I go to jobs. I have to, you know, say Tuesday, I have to be here and film, uh, at three, 3 PM in the afternoon for two hours or, you know, or that morning I have to go to my other business. So I may be editing on another day. So, you know, my job yeah. is so different. I don't know where I'm going to be at one day from the other. I just, you know, I fill my schedule up. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I mean, I can. And have- I, I, let me, I'm going to read the question again. I missed a word in here and it was, would you rather never have to commute or have a three-day work weekend? That makes more sense. And you still get paid to never commute. Yeah, but you would just work four days a week, but you would never have to commute again. But saying, would you never have to commute or would you rather have a three-day work Oh, three day weekend. Oh, you answer that one, and let me think about it. Um, you know, I like to work. Um, so mm-hmm. a three day weekend, man, I would love to not have to commute. I guess just get up I, and I walk already, outside. I can know. already tell you, you have a three day weekend. You're still working. Yeah, and yeah, that's I'm true. Still, I'm still edit. I mean, I'm editing today. It's a Saturday that we filmed this today. Yeah, I'm editing that today, and I'll be editing tomorrow, and I'll be editing all next week. Oh. And I've been editing this morning. I went to work today, uh, did all my shipping that had to be done today. I've already come home and started editing. Now we're doing podcasts. So we don't really get a three-day work weekend, no, yeah. no matter what. It would be nice to be able to not leave home, though, to be able to work from here, which I could technically, I guess, do. But, you know, I like to get up and go somewhere. It makes me feel good about myself to get up and go to work and, yeah. and have somewhere that. to go and something to do. Yeah, Yeah, you need that. Yeah. I love to vacation. You know, uh, we love to go out and film and do different stuff, but also there's times when you're out doing that after about a week, you go, yeah, I'd love to get, I like to be in a routine every day. I have a certain routine that I do. My sister went to her and her husband went to Italy recently. And I was talking to her about it. She was like, you know, after a little while, I just wanted to be home. And I was like, well, you know, you weren't there that long. She was there 17 days. Yeah. So I could see that after a while. She said after about four or five days, I was like, I just want to go out home. And I, and I get that. I know there in, uh, in Miami uh, two or three weeks ago when I went and filmed that commercial, you know, I had a uh, had a wardrobe fitting one day. And then I had a day in between that. Well, I think I had two days in between that until we filmed the commercial. So I had to fly in there and then have the wardrobe. Uh, the next day. So every morning before I left to go and film for the YouTube stuff, I um, are the wardrobe fitting. I got up early and went out on the beach for about two and a half hours and went swimming and uh, just hung out on the beach. That was pretty, that was, that was the life right there. That, that is life. life. And then go yeah. work. Um, so I, I could live that. I could do that. Spa guy. Yeah. I could go and hang out on the beach for two or three hours. So you could live in Malibu then. Oh, I will live right on the beach. Alabu one of these days. You know? <laughs> by, James you. Rockford, by James Rockford. Like Rockford. Yeah. yeah, I've been uh watch I've been looking at some of that stuff where the trailer was sitting in that we'll do lot. That. We've got to do that. I, I yeah. was gonna tell you, Billy. We're not gonna tell them what we're talking about, but but that's off of Pacific Coast Highway, right? Well, remember last time we were out there, we could you couldn't make that left turn? Yeah, that's where it was. That was the first season. The second season to the end was right down the road where we have to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's a really cool yeah. place. It, it, it's on a lot of TV shows in the '70s. This area uh, where where uh, James Rockford lived at for all those episodes in the parking yeah. lot. The restaurant is still there. 
that restaurant, we can still eat at that restaurant. Really? Yeah, it's we need to Paradise go do that. Paradise Cove. Paradise Cove. Paradise Cove. And uh, um, uh, the, the, there's a, did you notice the bridge, the pier? Yeah. Out over the ocean? Half of the pier is gone now. Yeah, but because of storms? Some of the pier is still there. But uh, man, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's Was that storms that took the pier? I don't know. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. We need to kind of research yeah. that. All right, next question. All right, so the next question is: With you, this is right up your alley. Would you rather do push-ups after every meal or sit-ups? <laughs> uh, for me, <laughs> for me, it would be sit-ups. Okay, of course. Uh, and I do sit-ups every day anyway. And yeah. I can tell when I don't do my sit-ups every day. Um, and I do push-ups most days, but I don't do them every day. But if I don't do my sit-ups every day, I will pull muscles in my back. I have to do that to keep my core strong. Wow. And you know, I just pulled muscles recently playing pickleball. You must have it. Wasn't, sit-ups. I wasn't doing my sit-ups like I was supposed to every day. And um, so it does make a difference. So I have to force myself to do it. Um I just feel good, man. I have a routine. I yeah. have a routine and it makes me feel good about myself if you uh you know stick with your routine because you're you know working your body out and stuff yeah when i was doing karate um when i was training and i haven't been in karate since covid um but when i was training in karate i shouldn't say since covid that's not true because i did karate at the dojo um when we were having lessons over there but in my normal karate classes we did push-ups every time we did a karate class so it was a part of it and uh, you would do push-ups for punishment, <laughs> you know. So it was, there was a lot of different things. Well, because karate is a discipline thing. If I'm, you know, I've it never is. taken yeah. karate, but I know a lot about karate because I'm a big Chuck Norris fan, and I've yeah. really learned a lot about his life and his um, foundations of of his vision of karate. And you know, it's a um, it, it teaches you respect, I believe, and it teaches you self control, and you know. You, you, Karate guys, you the work you don't want to use your karate on anyone. You know, yeah. you, you know, Chuck Norris, you know, the he preaches that stuff. You know, it's kind of a funny thing. Uh, I found a, a video of Chuck Norris in the 80s, uh, and, and somebody had, like asked him the question about, you know, this guy. There was a some karate guy that talks a big game, you know, talks about beating up people and and stuff like that. And Chuck Norris looked at the guy and said, Well, that's just a wannabe that's never gonna be. Mm-hmm. Karate, you know well they told us we're not we're not taught we're not taught to use that karate to hurt people to, to you right. know you know to be how tough and macho you are you know um now that's self-defense and but chuck norris even said that you know if four or five guys come up to him in an alley and wants his wallet he's going to give them the wallet mm-hmm. you know well, they and, told us in class that if you can leave get out of the situation, run, do do that, get out of the situation. Right. You only use it if you're in a posi- position where you have no other choice. But I am right. That's about like self-respect. And, Absolutely. Uh, and um, responsibility. You know, and and I think a karate is a good thing for, for kids. Um, for young kids. Like yeah. It's kickstart for kids because it, it teaches, uh, it, it teaches them a work ethic and uh, um, just, you know, being a good person, you know, being, you know, having, having a uh, core value, I guess, of course. Right. Uh, you know. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's all important. I've learned from Chuck Norris, <laughs> just by watching his shows, his movies, reading his books. And, you know, yeah. he's talking that, I've, you know, I told Chuck he's a inspiration to me. Yeah. All right. So this one, I know the answer for you. Um, it, would you rather have super slow internet or a low phone battery? <laughs> the answer is you rather have a low phone battery because you have a low phone battery almost all the all, time. All the time, man. I it's actually halfway right now. So, um, <laughs> well, see, I charge my phone every night overnight. So every day when I get up, it's full charge, and it'll last till I just usually in the at night eight or nine o'clock. It'll t- tell me I got twenty percent left, which it considers low battery. But I charge it again overnight. I do it every single night. Now, a day that I get messed up is when I plug the charger in and, you know, sometimes it won't take and I don't notice it. The next morning I get up and my phone's not charged. No, it's not so good. then I'm panicking, but I have a system. What I do when that happens, which is very occasional, it doesn't happen very often, is I, in my bathroom, I have, I'll take my charger and move it to the, I have the, I put these things in, in my bathroom 
when we remodeled that have USB plugs. So I can plug my cable into the wall there with USB and charge the phone while I'm taking a shower, that kind of stuff. And it doesn't charge it all the way up, but the rest of the day I'm charging the phone. I get in, in the car, the gray ghost, and I'm charging. When I get to work, I have a, um, I have one of those things that looks like a coaster that you lay the phone on and it'll charge while it's sitting on it mm -hmm. right by my computer at work. So, but I hate those days when I have to try to stay in front of the charge all day. doesn't yeah. happen often, but it does happen. Man, and uh, it seems like the phone is, is dying quicker and quicker, though. Right. Well, almost, and this is a funny thing, friends. Trey and I could be talking about something, and it'll just go, bing, he's gone. And I know his phone died. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't happen one time. It happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm right. bad at keeping my phone charged. All right, so here's, a, here's a, uh, a, a funny one. You could only hear one song for the rest of your life. Would you rather hear Baby by Justin Bieber or I'm Too Sexy by Right Said Fred? Do you know Right Said Fred's song? I know that song. I'm too sexy for my truck. Too sexy for my truck. Yeah. You know, I, I don't I, think I, it's, I don't think truck is in there, but I don't know the Justin Bieber song probably. I probably... Baby, baby, baby. Oh, oh baby. I would do you the, know that song. I would do the other one. I'm too sexy. Yeah. All right. For all of y'all that don't know the two songs, go listen to them. Right Said Fred is is pretty old, but it's pretty funny. Um, and I just think that's an interesting... Um, that's a good question. Uh, interesting songs. Okay, so here's, here's one right up your alley. Would you rather be a character in your favorite TV show or your favorite TV show not, show not exist? And so I, what I want you to contemplate is this. When you're outside of a TV show or something and yeah. you are not a part of it, it means something to you different than if you're in it. You see what I'm saying? So would you rather be in the show or would you rather the show not exist at all, but you not, not get the satisfaction of watching the show? You, you see what I'm saying? That's kind of a curvy question, I mean, but it's interesting. Look, I mean, uh, Billy, you know, I, I know the process of filmmaking. So everything would be. You know, I can't even watch shows today because I just I see everything, you know, <laughs> and I've ruined other people's experience. Now, they've told me that because I tell them, oh, that was probably filmed two weeks later or, or you know, things yeah. like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'd be a character in the Rockford Files. That's probably yeah. my or, you know, um, the Andy Griffith show. I'd like. I'd, yeah, I'd be a character in it because I, yeah. I, I couldn't have those shows not. Exist. So what is your favorite TV show? That's a good question, man, because I, I don't know if I can pick one. I my favorite shows are my favorite shows ever is the Andy Griffith show, Walker, Texas Ranger, the Rockford Files, Maverick. They're all t the same to me. Like I could I could be happy for the rest of my life just watching those four or five things and I'll rewatch them over and over again. And I'll never get tired of, you know, of of those shows. And I like those shows. My favorite show, if I had to pick one, would probably be Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. um, I just love the humor in Seinfeld, always have. And I'll refer to a lot of things that are in Seinfeld episodes. Yeah, you do. I just, I just think it's well-written. Um, it's very funny. Yeah. But I have other things I like. Do a Seinfeld um, episode. Yeah, we need to do a Seinfeld episode. It's, I just think it's interesting. and Maybe we can um, get uh, Jerry to be on the, a guest. <laughs> yeah. I doubt that, but <laughs> don't underestimate me now. You yeah. know, Let's see what can happen. You know, they say that there may be a Seinfeld coming back out. They may redo either the last episode or do another. I saw season. where he was kind of like hinting to that, alluding that he, to that. Uh, yeah. Uh, what What was what's Larry David? Yeah, Larry David, and did Larry David watch, is very funny. Did you ever watch his show? Because in it, just, curb, curb your enthusiasm. Yeah, that, isn't that just is, is it? Is it's it the Seinfeld adult version him? of Seinfeld. It's yeah, very it's, funny, but it's a little rough for my taste. It's yeah, you know, it's we, got some language in it, but there's but it's it's funny. Now you yeah. got it. Yeah, I got to give it to him. It's funny. And when Larry David was out of the Seinfeld show, they still held it together. But what they said was, which I thought was very interesting, and this speaks to the genius of Larry David, is that they Larry was able to take two or three or four scenarios in an episode that were all happening, happening contiguously and time all together at the end in his head. 
where their riders after he left didn't they could keep them going, but they did they just couldn't make that that thing mate at the very end the way Larry could. Mm-hmm. He could just see how it all tied together at the end in his head, and they didn't have the ability to do it. So it just speaks to to his. I his didn't genius. realize he left. So he he left the show. Yeah, he left the show. He said, if you go back and watch some some interviews, it's very interesting. Now, keep in mind, this show is making gazillions of dollars. I mean, they were just racking in the money. It was crazy the kind of money that they were making. But what happened was, if and I'm I'm I may be off on my numbers, but it seems to me that they got a deal for maybe it was either six episodes or twelve episodes from my memory. And they got the deal. They wrote the episodes. They got them filmed. They got them on TV. And of course, when that pilot hits, it's a, it's a hit or a miss. It may work. It may not work. And it may have been just six episodes. So then the pilot hits, it's popular. And they come to him and he was like, I get, I get the phone call. And they're like, you know, we need you to do 12 more. And he hung the phone up and where me and you would have gone. Yes. He went, Oh my God, how am I going to write 12 more? (laughs) <laughs> and that was that was his reaction. He said, I went into a mode where I'm going, holy moly, I'm now I've got to do this. I don't think I can do it. And <laughs> but of course he did, you know, for, for a long time. But he actually eventually left the show. And I can't tell you what uh, at what point, but they say that the point that he left from there on, the show was still good, but they could never get that magic that he could bring to it. Yeah. Uh, of all those things tying together. Like you remember the episode, um, one that that strikes me as very, very funny was when George was lying to impress a girl telling her he was a marine biologist and Kramer was out hitting golf balls into the ocean. And and uh, he's uh, George is at the beach with his girlfriend and this well washes up on the beach. And, um, and his girlfriend goes, well, he's a marine biologist. <laughs> You know, you need to go save this well. And so he gets up on top of the well and looks down in the blowhole, and it was the golf ball. It was a hole in one for Kramer. <laughs> but so you tell me George was always wishing Cotton was a monkey. He was indeed wishing Cotton was a monkey. You think about all the His times. His life was fake and a lie. He would do stuff like uh, another one that I could think of that George did that's pretty funny is he um, he got mad and quit his job. Well, over the weekend, he got to thinking about, man, that was a terrible idea. What was I doing? So he just shows up for work Monday like nothing ever happened. <laughs> and when they and when they call him on it, he goes, oh, that, uh, nah, I was just messing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I just love it. It It is so, so much. It ties to everyday things. Um, that, and where we were at at Red Studios, you remember, in uh, Culver City, is where, uh, which is was part of Desilu or next to Desilu, where close to it. Film, that's Lucy. where Andy Griffin was filmed. That's where Seinfeld was filmed. Oh, that's cool. And also the restaurant that uh, you always see, it'll just say restaurant on it when they're in it. You'll see the beauty shot of restaurant. That's in New York. And I put a video out recently where I ate in that restaurant. Now the interior does not look anything like the interior on the Seinfeld show. They're just using it for a beauty shot. Yeah. But it is a place that you can go in. Um, in Manhattan and Upper Manhattan, um, and eat, and I have, I've, I've eaten there several times. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> Looking for uh, Jerry and Jordan. All yeah, the- yeah. Oh, the and it's not laid out anything like it is in the show, but it's it is a place that you can go to, and I just love that. Also, the Soup Nazi is uh, it, the Soup Nazi is really close to um, to the Ed Sullivan Theater. I walk. I remember walking. It's only a few blocks. And he, they don't, he's not called the soup Nazi. I think it's called the soup. Is it soup man maybe, but they have it there where I went there and it was closed, but out on the sidewalk, they have your footprints painted where you have to stand here and then stand there and then stand there. So you have to line up a certain way and do certain things just like it's depicted on the TV show in order to get soup. Yeah. They ought to come back for like sign for one year. Yeah, if they would do they, one year, I'd watch every one of them. Make a lot of money, but yeah. have them today. Older. Yeah. I mean, they, I, I think love that, that stuff. That'd be awesome. 
All right. So would you rather be unable to use search engines like Google ever again or unable to use social media ever again? That's an easy one for me. Search search engines engines like Google because I make a lot of money on social media with my business stuff. And see, I would rather go the other way. I would rather not do social media at all and uh, and use Google it just and, not have and research. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't throw it because, you know, I've built, I've built. Uh, and uh, now I don't consider YouTube as social media. I'm talking about Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. Well, X. my business, though, my business relies on the social media. Yeah, it does. That's true. Mine does not. You know? Yeah. Yeah. My business. And, yeah. All right. And I know the answer to this one. Would you rather be a famous celebrity or married to a famous celebrity and you're unknown? There's just one girl I'm thinking about right now. If, if, if I could marry her, I, I, I would probably give up to being the famous celebrity thing. Um, All right. You can give a name out. Yeah. You know, Anna, Anna de Amaris. A girl Is she that, the one that played uh, Marilyn? Oh, yes. I think yeah. that. I think she's probably the, I would have to think, say she's the prettiest actress of all time. Wow. And I used to love Pamela Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to tell Pamela Anderson that. Yeah. But, uh, um, uh, I saw, uh, and oh. this is completely off subject. I saw her recently and um, not aged well. Who, Pamela? Yeah. No, I think she had, I think I, there's, there's, there's kind of a funny thing. I was talking about that the other day because she's, not wearing makeup now. Oh, is that what it is? She's she's given up wearing makeup and she wants to go natural and stuff. And I think she's still hot. So mm. you don't think so? No, nah, it was. Uh, but I, it, but it's it's kind of like um, it's kind of like you got this uh, you got this Ferrari that always looks like a Ferrari, and then suddenly one day that Ferrari tries to look like a, a Honda Accord. Yeah. And and so when you put the Honda beside the Ferrari, you it's very obvious that one of them doesn't look like the other. So for me, when I look at her, it just looks like, wow, you just didn't age well. I didn't know that she wasn't wearing makeup. Yeah, no, she's like yeah. she's she's kind of she's kind of going all natural, which I kind of wish that she stayed all natural from the beginning, because when you first see her, when she was she wouldn't be famous up, if she did. Mm. Man, but oh, yeah, I think so. That girl ah. was. That girl was pretty, pretty, pretty good looking. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, but then she kind of a persona was created and then with Baywatch and stuff. And then she kind of became this bad girl image. Yeah. And uh, but now it looks like she's really like changed. Yeah, I remember um, where were we at? Um, uh, what was the name of that town um, that's in the in the Spain song? Never been to Spain. Yeah, um, stopped at needles. needles. It was needles. Yeah, I remember the needles. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was a fun. One. But <laughs> yeah. I have to say this though, like I got to hang around Pamela Anderson. I got to yeah. talk to her uh, for a few hours actually at a race in Talladega a few years ago, and uh, she was really, really a nice lady. Like yeah. so, just so friendly and so like somebody that you would be friends with. Yeah. Um. And uh, like I told her, you know. I've, you were the first woman I ever loved. <laughs> I was 10 yeah. years old, Pamela, but you were the first. Thing <laughs> All right, let's so, go a different way. Would you rather fly to space and discover a new planet or go on a deep submarine adventure and discover a new underwater kingdom? You answer that one. Um, you know, um, for me, planets are meh. I mean, they've got, let, let's take into account, for instance, Uranus. Meh. Saturn. Meh. Who cares? Pluto. Meh. Right? <laughs> I right? guess. I guess. Okay. So if you go, if you think about um, going underwater, I mean, it would be cool to have some kind of an underwater thing. Yeah. Um, All I'm thinking about now is the, that crazy thing that, it, you know, imploded. Oh yeah, you're talking about the spaceship that blew up. 
you know. They and I don't know how you would discover a planet from a spaceship right. anyway. Yeah. I don't know, but deep submarine adventure, I don't know. Um, who knows? I mean, I would like to see Titanic. But it didn't work out for the last few people that went down there. Yeah. Um, on that little tin can, whatever they decided to get inside and go down all these many miles in the ocean. I mean, it just, yeah. it's so, you know, it's terrible. It's, it's sad, you know, but man, um, yeah, that would well, be interesting to see underwater. Going two miles deep. Boy, there's a lot of water pressure. Man. And wild. imagine, you know, they talk about like they, they, they knew something was wrong because they were hearing cracking. Yeah. And I mean, their life ended just like that. Just like that. All right. Would you rather live on a peaceful tropical island or a bustling big city? Peaceful tropical island. I would be on the island all day long. With Anna de Ramirez. Yeah, With Anna. I hear you. I think I and, uh, name, but... I just, you you don't know if her last name is de Ramirez. I really like. De Armas is, I think it's de Armas. I really like, um, I like the beach. I like going to the ocean and all that kind of stuff. So it would be cool. Yeah. Uh, to be there. I, I like that. the mountains as well. Mm -hmm. Johnny Depp owns a tropical island. Okay. How about this? Would you rather have to start a new job every year until you retire or have one job for your entire life? One job my entire life. I'm one job my entire life too. Would you rather live on a canal boat or in a RV for the rest of your life? An RV, because that would go good with my show. Mm -hmm. And Lori and I, <laughs> we've been looking at RVs. At some point, we're going to buy a bus and um, that I can haul the Grey Ghost around with and start and travel and just film yeah. every day at some point. That's, cool. that's my That's my plan. And uh, we've been looking at some. Um, I'm not ready yet, but in the next two or three years, it may not even be that long. I will definitely, um, definitely yes. do, de definitely invest in one. Would you rather be an Olympic athlete or a world famous scientist who cured a disease? Olympic athlete for me. I'd rather be a scientist. To, uh, cure the disease because yeah, be you just pressure. cure it and well you make a lot of money off of it and you can just yeah. hang out well i want to be an olympic basketball athlete that's me okay so would you rather spend your money traveling the world but have a few personal possessions or have a really amazing home but never leave your hometown traveling the world i would travel the world i mean that's already what we you know we do yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what that even means. What it says what if you could only choose one type of holiday for the rest of your life. Oh, I see. I see what they're saying. If you could only choose one type of vacation for the rest of your life, would you pick going to the beach or pick going to a city? I would go to the beach. I would go to the beach. I'm a beach guy. All right. So here's a cool one. Would you rather have Elvis's or James Dean's wardrobe? Elvis. Elvis had quite a wardrobe. Uh, you know, because they fit, you know, they fit him perfectly. A lot like of I, different looks. I, and I know like I'm his size, like I'm Elvis Presley's size, even uh, jacket and all kind of stuff. So. You know, the, but I think you're a little taller than him. How tall are you? I'm six feet. So yeah, I I don't I think he may have been five eleven. I might have been a little taller than him, but yeah. it's not too much. Yeah, slightly. Um, yeah, uh, about that much. I uh, now I wouldn't I wouldn't wear the probably do the jumpsuits, but uh, I like yeah, why not? I like how his you know he he customized you down on the jumpsuits. He customizes his um his his clothes. You know, he customizes look all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so going to that, would you rather wear all black every day for the rest of your life or have to have uh, mixtures of every color of the rainbow in your outfit every day? Man in black. I'd rather wear all black. I, you know, I, I'm wearing black right now, kind of. But, you know, uh, I like blue. I do like blue as well. 
I yeah, I'll, 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 I'll I would wear blue, black so. and blue. <laughs> That'd be my two colors. Would you rather be able to only eat spicy food for the rest of your life or never able to eat spicy food again? Never able to eat spicy food again. And that would be me too, because I don't eat much spicy food anyway. Would you rather... Be able to converse with animals or speak every language? Speak every language. That would give yeah. me a lot of jobs acting. Yeah, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, um, you know, like, Span you know, they're Spanish. And, oh, man, you'd be able to, to, to book all kind of stuff. And that's would you I rather? Good at. I was never good at learning a foreign language uh, i just i'm working on hebrew right now and hey now it is uh it's something else yeah would you rather live in the world of lord of the rings or star wars haven't seen any movie any of any star wars or lord of the rings movies never seen either one of them uh -uh. I, I'm that's just, interesting I, i'm not into those movies or harry potter or any of that Stuff. Yeah, I'm not big. Now, Lord of the Rings is actually biblically based, by the way. Um, but I've seen a little bit of Lord of the Rings. I've seen a lot of Star Wars, but I don't know. I kind of like the Lord of the Rings stuff myself. That would be that would be my go-to. Okay, would you rather have to wash your hands every five minutes or never be able to wash your hair again? Wash my hands every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I, I think yeah, I, I have to wash my hands every five minutes. I have all this hair, you know. So that means we got three minutes left. Let's look at a couple of more. All right, would you rather manage the world's greatest football team or the world's best band? The greatest football team. Say, so I'd go with the band. The greatest football team for me. Okay, would you rather, would you rather, this is interesting, would you rather never listen to your favorite artist's music again, but be friends with them, or have front row seats to all of their gigs, but they have no idea you exist? Be friends with Elvis. And then I would try to have talked some sense into the guy. <laughs> That's a good point. And then I got uh, fired, so I'd end up sitting at the, <laughs> You'd be down there with Red and Sonny and Dave, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably be friends with Elvis. That would have been, you know, it'd been cool to, it'd been cool to to see, you know, because I've been around Michael Jordan, and I've been around somebody that big, that, and I, I'm friends with Michael Jordan's friend, and I just, you know, I, I it, it would be, it would be cool to experience being around someone that popular and that loved and on top of his game yeah. as far as in his entertainment area, it would have been interesting to kind of just see uh, what that experience was like now. And I would, I would hope that, you know, you know, you could, you would, you, we could have helped him somehow because he yeah. needed, it. but also a guy, you know, a, a guy has to help himself at, at, at some point in life too. Yeah. You know. All right. Would you rather not know what you're doing tomorrow for the next 10 years or know exactly what you're doing every day for the next 10 years? Not knowing. I would rather not know too. That brings excitement to your, you know, that brings, yeah. you know, uh, you know, people that are depressed, you know, you know, you don't know your life could change tomorrow. Yeah. You know, don't be, you know, don't, don't give up on your life. I mean, that's the, that's the, most important thing you have, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, uh, tomorrow could, you know, the greatest news ever could come tomorrow. Would you rather be able to give the best gifts or the best advice? Hmm. I guess the, I don't know. If I get, I guess if I gave the best gifts, that means I guess you're pretty well off. 
the best advice. I guess the best advice, you know. Yeah. Because that's more important. Yeah, in the long run it is. Gifts, run. gifts will pass someone, away. If you help someone. All right. So this is our first time doing Would You Rather. I thought it was pretty interesting. Maybe that gave you a little look into how we think about things uh, individually. Because um, you saw that that Trey, uh, some of the things that he answered were different than some of the things that I answered. We all would answer them differently. And I hope as we went, y'all as well spoke or, or listened to what you thought was interesting about that and chose a way. So I just like these. Every now and again, we'll try Would You Rather. And I, like I thank y'all so much for watching. And tighten up every chance you get. Don't double dribble. Because if you double dribble, that won't be good. Yeah. You'll foul out. Oh, and I want to say, by the way, Spy Guy, we lost Bobby Knight. Yeah, sadly, and, Bobby passed away. And that that could be one episode because that guy was uh, – He was something else. He, he was something else, man. He was one of a kind. Yeah, no doubt. We'll see you next time. We'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. This is the Spa Guy, and this is Globe Trotting with Trey. And y'all check us out on YouTube. Check us out on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And don't be strangers. Hey, we have a lot of cool content on its way. Stay tuned.